Why will Bitcoin fail? In this episode, GPT-4 and I are going to be answering this question. Note, we are not experts, so make sure to take what we say with a grain of salt. Okay, so I begin by asking GPT-4, quote, why will Bitcoin fail? And it provides me a list of 12 reasons why Bitcoin might fail or face significant challenges. Now, before I go ahead and read GPT's number one response, I want to mention there are both good and bad arguments to be made against Bitcoin. Bad arguments are typically made by people in politics who have never studied crypto. They have never studied blockchain. They have never studied cryptography. And yet they feel qualified as to criticize the technology. And on the contrary, there are good arguments against Bitcoin. Arguments that are based in an understanding of the limitations of the technology. And so for today, I'll be explaining which arguments I believe to be compelling and which ones I don't. Okay, so I'll begin by looking at GPT's number one response, which is, quote, regulatory challenges. Governments around the world are grappling with how to regulate cryptocurrencies. Stricter regulations, bans, or unfavorable laws could hinder Bitcoin's adoption and utility, end quote. Okay, so two thoughts on this. Firstly, this is evidently not a reason why Bitcoin will fail. This is, on the other hand, a reason to believe that Bitcoin might face challenges in being adopted in society. Now, one of the things that should be noted about Bitcoin is that it is hard to regulate because essentially, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system that runs on the internet. It's a piece of software, which means that as long as you have internet access, you can interact with the Bitcoin network. And so in order to restrict people's access to Bitcoin, they have to restrict people's access to the internet. And I should mention that the government's responses across the world have varied significantly. So the United States, for example, treats Bitcoin the same way it treats property, while countries like China, as of September 2023, have actually banned Bitcoin. It includes transacting in Bitcoin, it includes mining Bitcoin, it includes investing in Bitcoin. And El Salvador, El Salvador has actually adopted Bitcoin as an official currency as of 2021. So as we can see, Bitcoin and the response to Bitcoin from governments have varied significantly and the regulations we see will have significantly impact, of course, its ability to be implemented as a medium of exchange in society. But whether or not this is going to be a reason Bitcoin fails, I am not convinced. And I should also mention one more thing. The fact that something is used as a medium of exchange simply means that you're actually using it to buy things. So for example, if you go and get a haircut, if you pay your barber in Bitcoin, $15 worth of Bitcoin, that would be using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. Okay, so now let's look at the second reason GPT writes that Bitcoin might fail is quote, scalability issues. Bitcoin currently faces challenges in scaling its network to accommodate a higher volume of transactions. While solutions like the Lightning Network are being developed, the success of these solutions is not guaranteed, end quote. So what are my thoughts on this? Firstly, this is a reason why Bitcoin is again, facing a challenge in being used as a medium of exchange in society. The number of transactions that can be processed by Bitcoin at its fastest is about seven transactions per second. Now, if we compare that to a centralized, for example, banking service like Visa, Visa can process up to as much as 65,000 transactions per second. And this is quite a difference. And one of the important characteristics of a medium of exchange is the fact that it can process transactions very quickly. And hence, they hear they mention the Lightning Network. Essentially, what the Lightning Network is, it's a network built on top of the Bitcoin network that allows transactions to occur more quickly by placing them off of the blockchain. Now, we don't need to jump into this topic in a lot of detail, but what we need to understand is that it is going to be crucial for Bitcoin to process transactions more quickly for it to be properly used as a medium of exchange. And one of the current problems with Bitcoin is that it's being treated today as a speculative asset, meaning people are betting on whether it goes up or down, as opposed to actually using it in society or holding onto Bitcoin as a store of value. And this is very problematic because if, if investors or if day traders or if speculators decide that they are no longer interested in speculating on the price of Bitcoin, then there could be an instance in the future which Bitcoin is abandoned. GBT's third argument is, quote, environmental concerns. The energy consumption of Bitcoin mining has raised concerns. The use of fossil fuels for mining operations contributes to carbon emissions, which could lead to increased regulatory scrutiny, end quote. So in my opinion, this is probably the most well-known criticism you'll hear about Bitcoin, which is the fact that it consumes tremendous amounts of electricity. To really explain this point, I want to quote a study done by Shamanara et al. 2023 titled The Environmental Footprint of Bitcoin Mining Across the Globe, Call for Urgent Action, states that the worldwide Bitcoin network has consumed 173 terawatt hours of electricity during the 20 to 21 period, bigger than the electricity consumption of most nations. The mining process is equivalent to the emission caused by burning 84 billion pounds of coal or running 190 natural gas fired power plants, end quote. Okay, so as we can see, there is a tremendous impact on the environment. 
Now, is this a reason why Bitcoin might fail? In my opinion, it is not. And I furthermore don't believe that how governments are going to restrict people from interacting with the environment and enforcing that they or and ensuring that they don't burn a certain amount of fossil fuels, I don't believe that it will have a significant impact on Bitcoin. Furthermore, one of the notes that should be made about Bitcoin is the fact that about estimates say half of Bitcoin's energy comes from renewable energy sources. And this actually makes a lot of sense, given that renewable energy sources a lot of the time are a cheap for source of energy, specifically hydroelectric power, for example. And so what this means is you could see an instance in which Bitcoin energy, in which the energy that's used for the Bitcoin network, actually comes hand in hand with renewable energy sources, especially as these forms of renewable energy become cheaper. And finally, the point that GBT makes here about regulatory scrutiny, how, again, governments might change policies that might restrict how we interact with the environment. I don't believe this is compelling, given that Bitcoin is a distributed piece of technology. People across the world have mining operations and people across the world are running nodes as well. GBT's fourth reason of why Bitcoin might fail or face significant challenges is, quote, technological limitations and competition. Bitcoin might face competition from other cryptocurrencies that offer faster transactions, lower fees, or additional features like smart contracts. Technological advancements in other cryptocurrencies could outpace Bitcoin, end quote. So this is an interesting point and probably the point that most people in the crypto space actually struggle with, which is deciding whether or not they believe competing technologies to Bitcoin will actually overtake Bitcoin. Now, to really evaluate this point, we should begin by asking the question, what properties does Bitcoin have that makes it unique to other cryptocurrencies? The first one is that Bitcoin has the first mover advantage. Bitcoin has been around since 2008. It has never been hacked. It has been adopted by a tremendous number of developers. People have invested tremendous amounts of money and time into Bitcoin mining operations. It is arguably the most decentralized blockchain. It is also created by a pseudo-anonymous person, unlike essentially all other blockchains in which have people in which they have teams that are responsible or foundations which are responsible for further encouraging development on top of that blockchain. So as we can see here, that Bitcoin is essentially is the first. Now, could it be that a new piece of technology or a new blockchain comes along that is almost as efficient or as more efficient as Bitcoin to allow people to transact in the real world, hold their value, and use it as a unit of account? And the reason, the answer to this question is yes and no. So currently, there are blockchains that exist that are essentially almost as decentralized as Bitcoin that allow transactions to be processed faster than Bitcoin, allows the transactions to be settled more quickly, and essentially, it's a more scalable piece of technology. Now, why has this not replaced Bitcoin? And the answer has to do with, firstly, all the reasons I had listed that makes Bitcoin unique, and secondly, because these technologies have not been adopted. There's the ability to do what is called forking Bitcoin. Forking Bitcoin is essentially just to say you are copying and pasting Bitcoin's code and you can use that same code or you can make changes to the code and try to create your own version of Bitcoin. And so this was attempted many times and most successfully, which was done with by Bitcoin Cash. So Bitcoin Cash was an attempt to essentially replace Bitcoin by changing the software to allow more transactions to be processed so it can be used more easily as a medium of exchange. Except this experiment essentially failed as people did not choose to ad adopt Bitcoin Cash. And so today, when we refer to Bitcoin, we are referring to the software that was created initially in 2008, and this is the same Bitcoin we are using today. Now, I would say that what's most important about this point, the point of new technologies emerging and new ways of finding consensus that are less energy intensive, some of those include Solana and Algorand, for example, is the fact that none of these technologies to date have successfully replaced Bitcoin. And so... There could be an argument to be made that despite Bitcoin having a very slow rate in which transactions are processed, I believe that there is still a compelling argument to be made that Bitcoin actually will continue to hold its value and grow in the long run, despite possibly even having competing technologies, which essentially do Bitcoin's job better. Reason number five is, quote, market volatility. Bitcoin's price is highly volatile, making it a risky asset for investors and a challenging medium of exchange for everyday transactions, end quote. So I've already spoken about this point already, as that it's a challenging medium of exchange. Warren Buffett actually describes Bitcoin as a, quote, non-durable mean of exchange, end quote. So as we can see, there are problems with Bitcoin. Now, one of the problems, again, is its volatility. And volatility essentially means when you go into a coffee shop, imagine you have to pay $5 for a cup of coffee today. 
Okay, it's a very expensive cup of coffee, but you pay $5 for it. Now imagine tomorrow the price is $10 for that same cup of coffee. As you can imagine, that's a serious problem. And that's different from other currencies like euros or USD, because these currencies can be manipulated by a centralized authority. Essentially, you have people in government trying to use economic levers to keep the price of a currency as stable as possible. And that simply does not exist in the field of crypto. Reason number six, according to GBT, is, quote, security concerns. While the blockchain technology underlying Bitcoin is generally secure, there are concerns about the security of wallets and exchanges. High-profile hacks and thefts have raised doubts about the security of investing in Bitcoin, end quote. Okay, in my opinion, this is a pretty bad argument, and it's a bad argument because, firstly, I believe part of it's factually wrong. From my current understanding, I don't believe Bitcoin has ever been hacked. I know that there were some changes made to the Bitcoin network in the very early stages before it really had any like price to it. And so I think we're conflating differences between exchanges and wallets and the security of the underlying technology. Because yes, hacks of exchanges, forms of criminality, of course, exist within exchanges. We've seen this historically. Um, and, and people losing their funds, people uh, losing their passwords. We've seen this occur as well. But again, that does not mean that the underlying technology is not safe. Reason number seven is, quote, lack of mainstream adoption. Bitcoin has not been widely adopted as a medium of exchange for daily transactions. It is still primarily seen as an investment or speculative asset rather than a cryptocurrency, rather than a currency, end quote. Again, this is a good criticism of Bitcoin and a reason why it might fail. Because again, if Bitcoin is not adopted in society, if it's not having a serious purpose, it begs the question of how it'll sustain a serious value in its long term. Reason number eight is, quote, dependency on the internet. Bitcoin's functionality is entirely dependent on the internet, making it less accessible in regions with limited internet connectivity and potentially vulnerable to internet out outages or government-imposed shutdowns, end quote. Once again, I think that this is a pretty poor argument because as I had already mentioned, Bitcoin is an, essentially an international currency. It's peer-to-peer -peer digital cash system that's a piece of software that runs on the internet. And so what this means is, the whole entire internet, more or less, would have to, at the same time, not work in order to potentially disrupt Bitcoin. And I don't believe that's very likely to happen. Reason number nine is, quote, centralization risks. Despite its decentralized nature, there are concerns about the centralization of mining power in the hands of a few large mining pools, which could potentially influence the network, end quote. So this is an interesting point. And I want to quote a, a title that I read from a crypto news outlet called Crypto Slate. And they say here that, quote, only two mining pools were responsible for mining more than half of Bitcoin's blocks in the second half of December 2023, end quote. So in other words, what this is saying is that, and by the way, this is a result of China banning Bitcoin mining. Essentially, what this is saying is that there has there is the possibility of people who are mining Bitcoin to collude with one another. And this is a serious threat to the security of the blockchain. Because again, the main selling point of Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. And one of the ways you can essentially attack a decentralized system is to collude with people who are responsible for securing the network and making sure that the information recorded on the network is correct. And this is what's called a 51% attack. Okay, and so one of the challenges that actually is endured if you manage to achieve a successful 51% attack includes stopping transactions, double spending coins, as well as preventing new transactions. And again, this basically means that you are destroying the reputability of the system. Now, what are some points that were not made by GPT that are also some potential reasons why Bitcoin might fail? Now, the first one, which I don't believe to be very compelling, is that Bitcoin is not backed by anything. This is typically seen as more of a criticism. But the idea here is that the US dollar is backed by some things, like, they have, like the, for example, the US government's ability to tax their people in US dollars and sell public assets. Okay, and this is different from Bitcoin, which is quite literally backed by anything. But again, this is not exactly an apples to apples comparison because these two technologies, well, in this case, a currency versus a digital currency are different. They're different in the way they're designed. Bitcoin, of course, has a fixed supply. The amount of Bitcoin that will ever go into circulation is fixed and transparent. And we see with normal currencies, like US dollars, for example, the amount that is printed or goes into circulation is decided by the people who are responsible for manipulating the economic levers within the economy. And the second point here is having to do with quantum computing. So essentially quantum computing in a nutshell 
is the idea that you could use computers through a new innovation in computer science to compromise the security of the network. Again, I don't find this particularly compelling because firstly, we're, I think we're pretty far off from quantum computing being able to make this capability come true. And secondly, I, and I speak for the Bitcoin community here, the Bitcoin community here has already been having conversations for a long time about quantum computing and how they could make changes to the protocol if in fact this does come to fruition. And finally, an argument that is made by the author of the Bitcoin standard is the fact that we could, in theory, return to a gold standard. So if governments around the world decided that, okay, we are now going to return back to a gold standard as we were, then in some cases you would argue that as gold has already been around for so much time, then the need for Bitcoin, if we have a currency that's pegged to gold, is not necessary. Thank you for listening.